Oh, can you believe that the 12 weeks is over? Look how dark my hair is. It's looking so beautiful. <laughs> So I just wanted to share in a separate video exactly the things that I do that or that I did during this 12 week challenge that really helped me get the results that I wanted and get help. I can't even speak. These are the things that I think made the biggest difference to me reaching my goals that I set for myself and I just wanted to share them because if you know if you're like oh I'm eating good and exercising but I'm not you know I don't feel as good as I want to maybe some of these tips might um, or some of the things that I've been through might help you there might be one in there that you're like yeah that's very true I don't do that maybe that would make a difference because maybe just that one thing that's gonna help change your life so I hope this helps you 12 seconds later I've just written down a couple of things that I have really found like okay say you're on a diet and you know you've got your food and your exercise they're your main things that you worry about wow my hands look huge <laughs> anyway um sure those things are important but I really have found that the micro habits that I've stuck to have helped me create a healthier routine overall so that I'll come out of this and I won't hopefully just put all the weight back on I've created some healthy habits along the way just to lead a better lifestyle and by doing these small things I feel like snowballs into helping other things for instance you know the more sleep you get the better you feel the less hungry you are the better you are for sticking to your calorie goal the better you are getting your exercise in blah blah blah, blah. and it all adds up so here's some things that I did or that I really worked on and made a conscious effort to do during the challenge to help me reach my goals so number one i mean these are not in any order these are just what came to mind water i tried to drink three liters of water a day um before that maybe i was getting at least at least one maybe two but definitely at least three i, I honestly can't tell the effects of drinking water or not but i know it's important so sleep i'm not gonna say i'll oh, get nine hours of sleep it's not about that it's about the quality of your sleep you know no caffeine i am really sensitive to caffeine so normally i try and have no caffeine after 12. i tried to i don't get very good deep sleep so i would try to calm down before bed you know no exercise no eating close to bed blah 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 um so quality of sleep was important and also sleep opportunity so if you only give yourself seven hours opportunity to sleep you're probably only going to be able to actually sleep for six hours of those so i gave myself nine hours of sleep opportunity so i was getting hopefully at least seven to eight hours of sleep almost every night sleep is probably the most important factor that a lot of people overlook so i truly believe that sleep has made the biggest improvement in my life in general um accountability so i checked in with people with friends the friends that i talk to about uh every workout that i do uh everything that i eat you know i have this youtube so people can see the exact amount of calories i eat per day and even though those people might not care just knowing that i can tell them like knowing that someone is seeing it helps me um, i also stuck to a fitness ebook where i had to meet certain requirements every week you know a certain amount of exercises so that helped me stick to the plan when I didn't feel like doing it tracking my calories and my weight I think obviously that's important how can you know if you're eating the right amount of calories if you don't track during the challenge I actually started weighing my food rather than eyeballing that has made a huge difference to hitting my calorie goals so beforehand you know I was eyeballing my serving size of say granola, corn chips etc. During the challenge I measured those things out so that I know for sure. So my tracking would have been a lot more exact. So even if there were days that maybe before the challenge were similar calories they weren't. Like say I had tracked it as 2000 beforehand. It was probably more like 2200 to 2300 with the oil you know the serving size being tracked wrong i also 
subtract my weight, which I think is important because if you're definitely sticking to your calorie goal and not losing weight, then you're not you know in a low enough calorie deficit. So my weight did go down a little bit. Taking supplements, I know that some people don't think this is important, but I do, especially because I'm vegetarian, I have to make sure that I'm getting the right supplements. So I take protein powder, vitamin C, vitamin D, fish oil, magnesium. I take a greens powder to make sure I'm getting my greens in because when you're in a calorie deficit, it might be hard to get the, the right amount of nutrients in. So I did that. I also have like a, um, immunity blend which has like berries and shit in it eating veggies there we go so i made sure that i tried to still get nutrients when i can by filling my plate with lots of veggies also helps with the volume makes you feel like you're eating more food makes you not feel nice and full even though it's very low calorie so that was definitely something that helped me uh keep my eating in check because i had a lot of food you know that along with tracking portion control definitely helped me to um, feel like I was still eating food but like I was obviously eating less food without realizing so I would serve up a smaller amount of dinner um, serve on a smaller plate that kind of thing so that your brain thinks that you are still eating the same amount of food um, I would also usually put like a bed of rocket underneath every single meal which also helped to make the plate look full Neat up 24-7, as they say, hugely, hugely, hugely important. So when you're in a diet or in a calorie deficit, your body will tend to try and conserve energy by, say, leaning on things, not fidgeting as much, not being as active outside of the gym to kind of conserve that energy. I tried to keep an eye on that. So I, even on the days where I really, really did not want to, you know, I still did my normal walking, still got, um, you know, I stood on the tram that kind of thing all the things that I would normally do like tried not to lean on things tried to keep active at work like not just stand around keep walking around I think that that made a big difference as well I mean I think that makes the biggest difference I would say like your your knee up I call it knee up 24 7 but your needs and your sleep are probably like the two other than exercise and food would be the two biggest things that are going to affect whether you reach your goals or not. Um, fasting, I don't think that fasting makes you lose weight, but I think it can be used as a good tool for keeping your calories low without feeling like you've lost any food. I, for one, found that I got too hungry if I didn't have breakfast and that would just make me hungrier throughout the day. So instead, I had dinner earlier. So I used to have dinner at like seven to eight. During the challenge, I was having dinner at almost, definitely, definitely before seven, usually like six to 6.30. So that my fasting window was like almost 12 hours. And I tried not to have any dessert or anything either to really like let my stomach clear out overnight and have that break of food. And then have breakfast like normal. Ah, uh, next one, eating breakfast. For me, like, do what works for you. If you get really hungry in the morning, eat breakfast. Like, I really, I personally think that eating breakfast helps control my hunger levels throughout the day. When I don't eat breakfast, I get really hungry in the afternoon. Something about your hormone levels, I'm pretty sure. But if you're a person that gets hungry in the morning, I think you should eat. I found it a lot easier to go to bed hungry rather than try and spend the whole morning hungry as fuck waiting for. And then one of the most important ones for me was I've written no stomach triggers. So that means I tried really, really hard to stay away from the things that I know hurt my stomach and just be more mindful of things that might be hurting my stomach that I wasn't really sure of, but I was just giving it a go. So I cut out onion, I was careful with my FODMAP, I was care I did not have one single thing that I knew for sure would make me sick. For instance, dairy, dates, um, certain like FODMAPs I w that I knew for sure I definitely stuck away from. I tried to have no artificial sweetness for like probably six weeks during the challenge. And then I also uh, was completely gluten free for about four weeks. Started reintroducing a little bit of gluten now just to see if that was a possible trigger. Um... But that's me personally, but if there's something that 
you know you know makes you feel sick you should not be eating it any time but especially during a challenge because you want to do what's best for your body and you're not going to see the best results that you can if you're feeling sick and your stomach is hurting so yeah i haven't had a single yeah, I would say probably the whole 12 weeks I haven't had a single flare up with my stomach, which is incredible. I've like, had times when my stomach was like a little bit sore, but nothing like crazy. Actually, it's hurting right now because this is the first time I've had like a big meal of gluten and I can feel my stomach hurts. So, yeah, interesting. But, yeah, when I did treat myself during the challenge, I would still try and st I wouldn't like go crazy and have things that I know hurt my stomach. I would just have like still have gluten free or uh, dairy free and artificial sweetener free because it's not worth it. It's not a treat if it hurts you. So they're my little tips on some things that definitely helped me um, keep like a healthy lifestyle in general rather than it just be about calorie deficit and exercise i think personally i don't think you can just go to the gym for half an hour and be like that's enough like you need to worry about what you're doing for the rest of your hours of the day like how you're looking after yourself what you're doing what you're drinking what you're eating how you're moving you know are you stretching you know are you you know how's your mental health how's your stomach feeling you know how your muscles feeling all those things like add up and they are what's gonna determine whether you get the results that you want or not so yeah that's all i've got to say about that um thanks so much for listening to that that i just wanted to share that that is my a few of my tips that I've got on how to help stay accountable and stay on track during a challenge.